You can build a top navigation bar like this in Power Apps using a component library. The biggest benefit in doing this is you can plug it into as many apps as you want without having to rebuild it each time. And any updates that you make within the component library, it's gonna apply all those changes to all the different apps you've put it in. I'll even show you how to plug it into a model-driven custom page. So let's go. thing we need to do is create a component library. So you're going to go to make.powerapps.com and you're going to navigate to the component library section. If you don't see the component libraries here, you can go to more and discover all. And you're going to scroll down to the app enhancements and you're going to see it right here. You can just select this pin icon and it's going to pin it for you uh, so it's more readily available next time. So you're going to go to that. I've created some test ones here, but basically you can just go new component library and let's, let's call this my navigation menus and click create. And so before we get started, I just want to look at the screen and you can see by default, it's a phone template. I'm just going to go to settings and display and just change that to landscape and apply. And this is just easier to work with because I'm going to be using this the app's template width to design the menu. So we're going to go back to the components and we're going to change the component name. I'm just going to call this top nav. We're going to change the width. So instead of 640, it's going to be app dot width and our height, we're going to set to 50. So that's going to be the height of our menu bar and the fill. We're just going to leave as transparent for now, but we're going to come back to that a bit later. And we're going to have to create three custom properties. So the first one is going to be our items for our menu and it, the data type will be table and I'm going to click create and it's default items. I'm going to change to this. It's going to be a table with five items. So where they're going to have their own ID, they're going to have their specific name and they're all going to point to the app dot active screen. Uh, but again, when you plug this into your various apps, you're going to have the ability to customize and you're going to be able to change those screens to whatever you need to. The next custom property is going to be our theme for our menu. And we're going to change this to a record and we're going to click create and its default value we're going to change. So it's going to be a record like this and it's going to contain various properties. Uh, it's going to have a background color, a background when it's selected, or you're going to have a hover color, the text and the text when it's selected. So if you want to follow along and create the same look and feel of, of the menu item that I showed earlier, you can just copy these colors, but you can definitely play around and change the colors to whatever you like. And then the last custom property is going to be uh, the company. So it's going to also be a type record. And we're just going to define a few properties or really just two. It's going to be the name of the company and a, a logo image. And we're just going to use a sample image for now. Uh, but again, you'll be able to modify this when you actually plug it into the various apps. And now that we've established our theme, we can actually go into the fill property and update this to top nav dot theme dot background. So now let's some, create some containers. We're going to do a horizontal container and this is going to be called con root. And we're going to change some of its properties. The justify will be moved to center. We're going to keep a line at the start. The X and Y will be set to zero. The width is going to be parent dot width and height is going to be parent dot height. And we're going to remove the border radius and the drop shadow. And within this container, we're going to do another horizontal container. And we're going to rename this con company. And it's going to have a justify at the start. A line vertical will be center. We're going to have a gap of 10 and we're going to change the minimum height to zero, minimum width to zero, and again, remove the border radius and drop shadow. 
and we're going to actually add some padding. We're going to change the left padding to 20 and that's going to give some separation from the start of our menu to the image that we put. So speaking of image, let's insert an image and let's rename this IMG company. And we're going to change this image position to fill. We're going to change the height to 30. The width is going to be 30 and the border radius is going to be 15, which is half of the width or height of our image. And that's going to make it in an, into a nice circle. And of course, our image property, let's insert top nav dot company dot logo. And next, we're going to insert a text label. So let's rename this to LBL company. And I'm going to change its text property to top nav dot company dot name. We're going to change its font to Leto. The font size will be 10. We're going to set it to stretch and minimum height will be zero. Flexible width will be on and we're going to change its minimum width to zero. And the color is going to be top nav dot theme dot text. And so now it's time to create our gallery, which is actually going to contain our menu items. So what you want to do is click on con root and we're going to insert a horizontal gallery and a blank horizontal gallery. And we're going to rename this to gal menu. And for its items property, we're going to change this to top nav dot items. And remember, we've already defined that table within the custom properties of the top nav. We're also going to change the minimum height to zero, turn off flexible width and change its width property to self dot all items count times 100. And the template size, we're also going to change to self dot width divided by self dot all items count. We're going to remove the padding and we're going to turn off the scroll bar. And we're also going to search for the delay item loading property and we're going to switch that to false so that it doesn't do that loading animation that it sometimes does. So next we're going to set up our button. We're going to click on the edit gallery and we're going to insert a new button and let's rename this btn select item. We're going to delete the text and we're going to set its x property to parent.templateWidth minus self.width all divided by 2. We're going to set its y property to parent.height minus self.height all divided by 2. So that's really going to center it within that container, but obviously the height and width are too big. So let's adjust that. Let's change the width to parent dot template width times 90%. And let's change the height to parent dot height times 80%. So that's going to make it sit nice and center, but not all the way across the container. I'm going to remove any border. So it's going to be none and the border radius will be 20. And we're going to change some of its fill properties. So the fill property will be color dot transparent. Hover fill will be top nav dot theme dot background hover. Pressed fill is going to be color fade self dot hover fill minus 20%. So that's going to make it a little bit darker than our hover fill. And for our on select property, we're going to change this to navigate this item dot screen screen transition fade. 
So now if you hold Alt and hover over, you'll notice that it does have that hover animation. So next we wanna insert a text label and we're gonna reorder this, send it to back and let's rename it LBL item. And we're gonna change its X and Y properties to zero. And width will be parent dot template width and height will be parent dot height and let's change the font to Leto font size will be 10 and we're going to do something with the font weight so if this item dot screen equals app dot active screen then I want a font weight semi bold, otherwise font weight normal. Our text alignment is going to be at the center and we're gonna update the color property. If this item dot screen equals app dot active screen, then we want the top nav dot theme dot text selected. Otherwise, I want top nav dot theme dot text. And I'm just going to copy this because it's going to be similar logic, but this time for the fill property. I'm going to paste it in here. Uh, and instead of text selected, if it's if the screen is active, then I want background selected. Otherwise, I want the background. And so next let's insert a horizontal container just to add the user. So we're going to go back into the con root and insert a horizontal container and let's rename this con user. We're going to justify to the very end and we're going to do a align center. We're going to do some padding on the right hand side, which is going to be 20. We're going to do minimum height zero minimum width will be zero border radius zero and drop shadow none and here we'll just insert an image let's call it img user the image property let's make it user dot image we're gonna make it fill and the height property will be 30 width will be 30 and we're going to do border radius of 15. So now all you need to do is publish. And now you can plug this into any app that you want, including a model driven custom page. It's going to look very similar and I'll do a demo of plugging it into a model driven custom page because there are a few differences that I want to cover. And so you can see I have a model driven app and I've already plugged it in as a custom page, but I'm going to do a new page so I can show you the process of how you can do this. So when you create a new custom page, you can create custom page. Let's leave it as page one. And here we go. And so I'm just going to change the fill color. I'm just going to do a custom F5, 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 F5. It's just a light gray. And here's how you can bring the new component that we just created. You can go to the insert tab and there's a little folder up here, which says get more components. So you can click this and locate the one that we just created. So our component library was just called my navigation menus. So you can expand that. And this is the one we just created. So just click select and import. So now that it's imported, you can actually look at the library components and just click on it and it's going to go right there. So when you select this, you'll notice our three custom properties that we defined. And you can see the items property is all right here. What you want to do is control X. So let's copy this and I'm going to reference instead of that code, I'm going to say menu items. Now this doesn't exist within our app yet, but I'm going to create it. So you're going to go to the app and you're going to go to your formula screen and let's define menu items equals to what we just copied add semicolon and you can see it's back and updated and you can ignore this error here 
Now for the theme, we can do the same thing. I'm just gonna control A, control X, and we're gonna say menu theme, and we're gonna go to the app formulas bar, and we're gonna go down and we're gonna say menu theme equals, and we can paste, add the semicolon, and you can see it's all good. And then the last part, company information, I'm just gonna do Again, control X, menu, company. And we're gonna go to app, again, formulas bar, menu, company, equals, to that same value and add a semicolon. Now, if we wanna make it pop out of the page, let's insert a container. And it's just gonna be a regular container. I'm just gonna drag it out and let's say, we'll make it this wide and the height will be 50. And we're gonna take our component, we're gonna control X and paste it inside of our container. And I'm gonna change the width property to parent.width and its height property to parent.height. For the container, we're gonna change the border radius. So we're gonna make it 25 to make it fully round. I'm gonna do a regular drop shadow and then I'm gonna move it just up here. Now the thing with model-driven custom pages, by default, you'll notice you can't add a new page or a new screen. So what you have to do is go into settings and under display, you can scroll down and enable multiple screens. Unfortunately, you can't duplicate screens, but you can create a new one. So I'm gonna create one, two, three, four, five total screens, because that's how many items we have in our navigation menu. And I'm gonna also click on this container and copy and paste it throughout each screen. And now you'll notice when we try and click through these, they're not, they're not actually navigating the pages. So what we need to do is go back to the app and formulas bar and change some of these screens. So I'm just gonna delete all of them and I'm gonna say screen. And so this is gonna be screen one, screen two, screen three, screen four and screen five. So now they're all mapped together. And because we defined everything in our formulas bar, when we make a change up here one time, it's gonna update all of the other items in, in each of the screens. So now when we hold the Alt key and click through, you'll notice that it's navigating through the screens and it's highlighting the appropriate menu item. And that's it. So now we can go ahead and publish. And then once you publish your app, you'll notice it's gonna to start to load your custom page. And so there you go, you have a functioning navigation menu, which you can embed within a regular Canvas app or a model-driven custom page. Thanks for watching. And I really hope these tutorials are helping you along your journey to master the art of Power Apps. See you next time.